on December 13, 2012, pursuant to Rule 68 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, an offer of judgment was made by the defendants in the case of Madden versus the town of Hempstead. On December 28, 2012, an acceptance of offer of judgment was filed by the plaintiffs. So what does this mean? What distinguishes a Rule 68 offer of judgment from an ordinary settlement offer? First, Rule 68 offer of judgment is not confidential. It is filed with the court and becomes part of the public record about the lawsuit. Second, it operates legally as a finding of liability. This is what judgment means. It means that the defendant is being held liable to the plaintiff. The rule also allows the party making the offer of judgment may do so on specified terms. Consequently, most defendants state their offer of judgment is not to be construed as an admission of liability, just like they do in an ordinary settlement. Such a disclaimer, however, is meaningless. It is meaningless legally. It may have some public relations value, but legally it is meaningless. In this case, there were no specified terms. There were no stipulations. In this case, the case of Madden versus the town of Hempstead, full liability is being accepted. That's what this judgment indicates. One page document defining the offer of judgment has no stipulations altering the allegations made in the plaintiff's petition. Michael's theory statement to the press, the state the township is satisfied that the settlement of a legal case involving the shelter indicates no wrongdoing on the part of the plaintiffs or the town is factually inaccurate. The very nature of the offer of judgment is that it allows judgment to be entered against the defendant in the case. In this case, the defendant made the offer. This means that the offer of judgment and acceptance of liability is brought about voluntarily by the defendants against themselves, not by a jury. The town may be satisfied with the settlement, but it certainly doesn't mean no wrongdoing. Michael Deary's statement that this offer indicates no wrongdoing is wrong. This wrongdoing is defined in the petition statements of the lawsuit. These statements indicate that the defendants, including Supervisor Kate Murray, violated the First Amendment rights of three residents. Their right to access government, their right to be free from retaliation, and the right to equal protection under the law. The town and Kate Murray also violated their 14th Amendment, which prohibits state and local governments from depriving persons of life, liberty, or property without certain steps being taken to ensure fairness. Anyone who has sat in on town hall meetings will realize Kate Murray is anything but fair. Several months ago, Kate Murray made a grand production here in town hall with the council people and the town attorney to try to get an elected official to resign based on allegations alone. Today, Supervisor Kate Murray has an official judgment against her for violating the constitutional rights of three residents of the town. A judgment, not allegations. This judgment was not brought down by a jury, but by the defendants themselves, by Kate Murray herself. Why don't these council people who stood here in town hall, besides Kate Murray, before the press and TV cameras, demanding the resignation of town officials based on allegations alone, rise up the president of the nation, demand the resignation of the supervisor Kate Murray, who now has a judgment in her name, not just allegations. The supervisor who lied to the town residents, saying there was an ongoing investigation against the Green Van residents, but in fact, this was not the case.